Hello friends, welcome to our e-comfort zone channel designed with you in mind. We're so happy that you're watching this video and we believe you will enjoy it. In this video, we are sharing a short feature on the topic, financial management in crisis time. The talk will be delivered by Pastor Tailbeni Singh. We hope you will enjoy this presentation and greatly benefit from it. Please feel free to ask questions and make comments. But first, let us listen to a song by Gabriella and Natalia. program today. I'm glad that you have joined us because today we want to talk about a very important subject, a subject that's important to every person. Uh, and that subject deals with 
uh, financial management. Financial management is a challenge in good times. So it's important to appreciate financial management in the time of crisis. Because of the nature of uh, this presentation and the volume of information that uh, has to be shared, uh, we would divide this presentation into two parts. We deal with part one today, and on another occasion, we deal with part two. Um, but the question really is, how do you manage your financial resource to get the best out of every dollar? Every person and every home wants to get the best out of every dollar that is spent. Can I begin by saying to you that in order to get the best out of every dollar, you must make wise economic choices. Yes, it is about choices. How you manage your money, what you get out of it, is really about choices. I recommend to you, therefore, four measures that every person or every family must follow in wise financial management. Uh, because we are dividing this presentation into two parts, uh, of those four, we will deal with two parts today. And then on another occasion, we are going to deal with the, the second two, two parts. But I'm going to share those four with you. For, for wise financial management, you must make or remake a budget. And we're going to talk to that. And start an income generating activity. What can you do to start generating a new, a new source of income? Uh, number three, develop saving measures. Develop saving measures. And number four, stay out of debt. So today we deal with part one, and, or rather, one and two in part one. And then on another occasion, we will deal with um, the three and four. So we look at part, in part one, uh, make or remake a budget. It's important that you appreciate that every income earner, whether that's a family, whether that's a person, whether that's an entity, must have a budget. Brothers and sisters, a budget is a simple document that says, I will tell my money where to go rather than ask my money where it went. And every income earner should have a budget. Some people's budgets are a little more relaxed than other people. Some people make a very rigid budget. Um, some people think that I'm not going to make a budget because I have so much money I don't need to make a budget, to live on a budget. And then there are some people who say I have so little that it doesn't make sense making a budget. Whether you have much or you have little, it is wise counsel to make a budget. But in crisis times, in difficult times, in challenging times, it may be necessary to remake your budget. Now, the average person making a budget should, be, uh, should understand that from time to time, you will have to revisit that budget. And that's okay. That's okay. But when you come to a crunch time, when you come to a crisis, it is important to revisit that budget. I say we make a budget, but it's really about revisiting that budget. And in revisiting the budget, what you want to do, especially in a crisis, is to differentiate between your priority items and your discretionary items. What are your priority items? What is priority for you? Well. Let me just suggest that if you have loan, a loan or loans, or you have a mortgage, then you want to make sure that you put that on a priority list because you want to keep current with your loans. You don't want to have those um, going off, being deferred for a long period. You want to stay current with your loans. You want to stay current with your mortgage. So that's on your priority list. Um, then, of course, food. Every family needs food. So you want to keep food on your priority list. If there are ill persons in the, in the family, uh, there are aged persons in the family, uh, then medication and doctor bills would be on your priority list. They must see the doctor. They must uh, fill their prescription. So keep that on your priority list. Then there's some people who, in time of crisis, want to sacrifice education. 
But brothers and sisters, education should be on your priority list. Keep that on your priority list. And I want to put something on the priority list that in a crisis you may think, well, I can do without on my priority list. But let me say it. You need to put savings on your priority list. I have it at the top of my list. I don't know where you want to put it on your list, but even in a crisis, you need to discipline yourself to put away something for saving. So those are your priority items. You can add a couple more to that. Um, we can talk to that a little bit more, but I want to go to the discretionary uh, section of this remade budget. In the discretionary section, and there are some things that will fall in there. Entertainment, personal family entertainment will be one of those things that will be now a discretionary item. Yes, eating out, going out, um, having fun, recreation. Those are entertainment items. And that's really discretionary. You can decide you're going to go out less. We're going to eat out less uh, because you now have discretion over that. Uh, personal allowance. In a normal budget, under normal conditions, uh, you may have uh, an item for personal allowance, but in a crisis, you want to now revisit that personal allowance. Um, the whole issue of vacation and travel. You may not be able to go to Paris or to Dubai. You may only be able to go to Tobago or maybe somewhere nearer. And so that's discretionary. What about cable and, and, and phone and other gadgets? Those are discretionary. And so because they are, then you can now adjust them in your remade budget. But every family must have a budget. Every income earner, put a budget, a plan in place, a spending plan. And so tell your money what to do for you rather than ask your money where it went. Then let's talk a little bit about starting an income generating activity especially in a crisis. Um, I want to think under normal conditions you want to do it, but especially in a crisis when your regular source of income has been uh, reduced or sometimes totally taken away, how do you survive? And so you need to start asking yourself, what can I do to now uh, generate a new source of income? Well, can I suggest to you, that you can plant a backyard garden and sell the produce from your backyard garden, yes. I know there are some of you who have good hands for planting. And if you have a good hand for planting, why not plant a backyard garden? Plant a backyard garden, um, use every square foot of space that you have uh, and uh, sell the produce from that backyard garden. Why not turn your hobby or your skill in, into an income earner? Yes, there are some people who have some hobbies or some skills that they can turn into an income generating activity. Yes, there are people who are planting uh, ornamental plants and they plant it for decoration purposes. And I'm not gonna say to you, don't have decorations, don't plant plants for the purpose of decoration, but I say, why not take it one step further and turn that hobby in, into a gener income generating activity. Uh, the same seeds that you buy for your backyard garden. Why not learn to sow those seeds for yourself, to raise those seeds for yourself? And then when you raise those seeds for yourself, uh, start selling some of those seedlings to your neighbors and to your friends. Now, there are some people who have a really great recipe. Yes, they have a beautiful recipe a recipe for bread, a recipe for some pastries. Uh, why not take that recipe and turn it into a, an income generating activity? Yes, don't just give away your bread. Have people tell you how, how delicious your bread is and how wonderful it tastes. Let them buy it. Nothing is wrong with asking them to buy it. Um, there's some people who can do extra lessons, who can give extra lessons, um, you're skilled in that area, that you've been giving extra lessons for free, now you can give extra lessons for a fee. Then learn to advertise your skills and your service. We live in an age of social media, and social media allows you to, to advertise 
your skills and advertise your services for sale. So there are some of us, some of you who can do editing and you want to advertise that for sale. You are a graphic designer, you can do tax returns, you can do legal services, you provide cleaning services. There are some of you who are into the trades, the plumbing and the masons and the carpenters and, and all of that. You can now use social media to advertise your skill or your service for sale. So why not think about that? A beginner cottage industry. Somebody says necessity is the mother of invention. Well, I say in a case where there's a crisis, that's a necessity. And that necessity could now bring you to the place of being an inventor, if you please. So why not begin a cottage industry? Get into the sources. You have all kinds of sources now. I, I went to the grocery sometime recently and I saw Shadow Benny sauce. And I'm saying, wow, hot sauce, Shadow Benny. And I'm saying, but look at, we, somebody can get into that. There are a number of condiments that you can now get into as a cottage industry. A number of sweets that you can get into uh, as a cottage industry. Why not begin for yourself, for your home, for your family, a cottage industry? And brothers and sisters, as I bring part one to a close, retool, retrain, re-educate. Yes, because of the economic uh, situation and because of the demands on the job market and because a number of persons are losing their job and you are not immune from that, then you may have to appreciate the wisdom of retooling. So retool. Learn a new skill, retrain, go find some avenue to retrain, some opportunity to retrain and to re-educate. Why not go back to school? It may not be formal school, it may very well be a trade that you want to get into, some skill that you want to learn, but why, why not re-educate? There are some persons who can re-educate by going back to formal school, and that's okay too. But start an income generating activity. If you are so secure in your job, then that's great. But no matter how secure you are in your job and what kind of monies you earn as an income, having something that can allow you to have extra income is always an asset. Do it for yourself, do it for your home, do it for your family, and you will discover that you will feel better about yourself, uh, you will experience greater income and greater privilege to now use that income for yourself, for your home, and for your family. Thank you very much. See you in part two. Thank you very much for watching this video. There is a second part which will be uploaded next week, so stay tuned. Would you like to ask a question or make a comment? Please feel free to do it in the comment section below. And now let us close with a session of prayer. Lord, thank you so much for everyone who has tuned in and will watch this video in the future. I pray that this video will be a tremendous benefit to those who view it. In Jesus' name, Amen.